crafting a vampiric coffin cake inspired by the tomb of Dracula himself. Of course. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of Within the Cauldron. In this week's episode, we'll be crafting a vampiric coffin cake inspired by the tomb of Dracula. It's a devil's food cake with a strawberry compote filling and a Swiss meringue buttercream, all of which we will be detailing how to create in this week's episode. Now, before we begin, I want to start out by acknowledging Christine McConnell, and more specifically, her series, From the Mind of Christine McConnell. She was a huge inspiration of mine, and without her, this series would not exist. This series is very heavily inspired by her series as well, so I'll be linking her channel in the description below. Now, without much further ado, let's get into the crafting of this cake. Always start by greasing your pans first. I normally use butter and flour, however Baker's Joy and flour works just as well. Next, you're going to start by making your actual cake. I used a gluten-free devil's food cake recipe, which I will link in the description below. This wasn't included in the recipe, however espresso powder does wonders for a chocolate cake. Just add a little bit in when you're mixing together your dry ingredients. This only applies to cake recipes, but the key thing to remember is separating your dry and wet. If you look at the recipe, you can kind of separate the ingredients into dry and wet and sort of formulate the steps in your mind. It's just combining the dry and combining the wet, and then mixing them together. Now make sure to distribute your batter evenly, and always tap out your pans to remove any excess air bubbles. Now I'm going to bake these in the oven for 15 minutes at 325, turning them halfway through and letting them bake for another 10 minutes or so. You can use a skewer to determine if they're done or not. If they're done, they'll come out clean with no goo on them. Then I took them out of the oven to let them cool. While they were cooling, I started on my Swiss meringue buttercream. It sounds really intimidating, but Swiss meringue buttercream really isn't all that complicated. When separating egg yolks from their whites, I always find it easiest to just use my hands, separating the yolk from the white in my fingers by tossing them like this. I always save my yolks for later for another project where the recipe might require egg yolks. I'll link the recipe that I used for this Swiss meringue buttercream in the description box below. After the egg whites and sugar are mixed together, we're going to put them over a double boiler. This really is to melt the sugar into the egg whites and ensure that there are no granules of sugar in the egg whites themselves. When making this Swiss meringue, it's really helpful to use a wet paper towel and go around the edges of the bowl to dissolve any excess sugar crystals that may have built up along the bowl. Your mixture is done when it has an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you don't have a candy thermometer, you can just string a little bit of the mixture in between your fingers and rub it to make sure that there are no sugar granules. This is absolutely key. The next step in this buttercream is to whip up this mixture until you get a thick, glossy meringue. You know that you're ready to add your butter to your meringue when you have thick, stiff peaks. Not soft peaks, stiff peaks. Now add your room temperature butter to your mixture dollop by dollop. 
Now, halfway through, it will get a little bit soupy, but just keep whipping and it'll whip right up. Mine got a little bit too soupy towards the end, so I just put it in the fridge for a minute to firm up and then continued whipping. While it was firming up, I created my strawberry compote filling. Now, normally I would use fresh strawberries to make this, however, I didn't have any on hand. So I used strawberry jam, which works just as well. To make this filling, I emptied some strawberry jam into a saucepan. To this, I added some corn syrup, sugar, and lemon juice. The lemon juice is essential to make sure that it gelatinizes properly and it adds a wonderful tartness. It's really quite simple just to keep cooking it until it reaches a thick consistency, quite like the one that you see here. When it does reach this consistency, take it off the heat. Now comes the part where we actually get to assemble our cake. So I added my cooled cake onto a plate and measured out the approximate shape that I wanted and cut that out. Then using the first cake as a template, cut out the second cake in the same shape. Be sure to save the carved off pieces for later. We're gonna be crumbling them up and using them as dirt to go around our coffin. Use a dollop of your buttercream, I added chocolate to mine, to secure your cake to your cake stand. In my opinion, the easiest way to fill up a piping bag is to put the bag in a cup and then use a rubber spatula to put your icing into the bag. To fill our cake, we're going to pipe a border of buttercream along the edge of the first cake. This ensures that none of our strawberry filling will spill out when we sandwich the cakes together. Make sure that your filling is at least slightly cooled before putting it on the cake, or it will melt your buttercream. And make sure that it is distributed in an even layer, so that both the cakes will sandwich together perfectly. Once they're stacked, it's time to carve the edges of the cake until it reaches your desired shape. Of course, for this cake, we're making a coffin. This carving step is crucial, as the uniform shape will make our process of icing later in the process much easier. Now it's time to add our crumb coat. I just put my chocolate buttercream in the bag and spread a thin layer across the entirety of the cake. What this does is it traps all of the crumbs in the cake so that later on, no parts of the cake peek through the icing and we have a really cool uniform shape. Using a flat tool, spread out your crumb coat as evenly as possible. In the crumb coat stage, it's really helpful to ensure that all your edges are sharp and clean. This will really help us out later in the process. Once the crumb coat is done, put it in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes to firm up. While that's happening, I added some activated charcoal to my buttercream to make it darker. 
Don't add too much because too much activated charcoal can be bad for your digestive system. Once it's firm and chilled, I add my darkened buttercream all over the surface of my cake. Now we do the same thing that we did with the crumb coat, smoothing it out and making sure that it looks uniform. Now, this step can take as long as you want it to. You can really toil with this for hours on end. I was in a little bit of a time crunch, so I had to move relatively quickly. But really, just keep smoothing until all of the corners and edges are uniform and you're happy with it. Now, I take some still light buttercream that I set aside before I darkened it, and I put it in a piping bag with a star tip. Then, I just add a little bit of pressure and squeeze in the bag and lift it up and pull along, creating this wonderful border effect. I do this along every edge of the cake, including the vertical edges and the bottom edge. Now I put the icing in a different bag and just cut off the tip a little bit. In the light icing, I'm outlining the shape of a bat on top of my coffin to really fit the vampiric theme. Fill in your bat with all sorts of different textures as necessary. I pulled up a reference photo that I used to create this bat. Now we skipped a couple of steps, but really you can just keep adding and adding detail to this cake. I added hearts and crosses to the sides to really sell the Dracula theme. And now our cake is done. I hope that you enjoyed the creation of that vampiric coffin cake as much as I did. It was very good. <laughs> be sure to tune in next Sunday at 8 p.m. sharp to see what we will be creating next on Within the Cauldron. Until then, my name is Sam, and have frightful dreams.